so nice hi yes hi my name is Kristen thank you so much for joining me and this is day one of my experience with the 2023 San Francisco pin show I'm going to show you some of the things that I planned to purchase and then I'll show you the things that I did not plan on purchasing but did it anyway so let's get started I did not purchase a Scribo pen before the pen show because I really wanted to feel them in my hand. I feel the pleasure of writing or what is it? Feel the writing. Sorry. Feel the writing. One of the kind ladies at Venice Pens actually let me use her Scribo feel with a double broad nib. That thing was juicy and smooth and wonderful. But I did not get a double broad. <laughs> I got this Scribo feel. I really enjoyed the feel of the feel. I really enjoyed holding the Scribo feel in my hand over the Scribo Puma, but that doesn't mean that I won't get a Scribo Puma sometime in the future. Not in the near future because I spent too much money today. But this, oh, I almost dropped it. This is my new Scribo feel and it has a fine flex nib. This is a 14 karat gold nib. It came with its own little pouch. So I can put two pins right here. And then, oh yeah, there's a little polishing cloth on the inside as well. So that is the first thing. That was the first table that I visited because Van Ness was right there at the entrance. This is a shown design. Oh, I'm so happy. <laughs> I'm so happy about this one. This is, now I got the peak material. I've heard that this is a very difficult material to machine, uh, to work with because it's very brittle. This is one of the most tame looking fountain pens that Ian Schoen has at his display table. So they only had a small amount of these left. He did mention that eventually they're probably going to be making some more peak material fountain pens, but they are limited on the amount of these that they've got left over. So this is Schoen Design fountain pen with a monarch nib. Oh. And what's so great about this one? This is the perspective nib ground by Gina Salarino of Custom Nib Studio. Oh, I'm so happy about this one. This is Gina's interpretation of the Naginata Togi nib grind. And it is so good. I have a Shone Design Pocket 6 fountain pen that has, you know, some bold colors on that thing, but I really wanted something that was super subtle just to focus on the nib itself. And I wanted to be able to put any kind of ink, any color in this fountain pen and be absolutely fine with it. Oh yeah, and there's like a little ghost right there. So it's like peak abu. <laughs> so clever. And he also included one of the syringes. Oh. The, the engineering that this guy, he's definitely an engineer because the way that he was, just the little things that he does in order to make things go, even down to like the small details that he, or the small things that he did in order to get ink to flow to the nib of the pen. Like what in the world? I'm looking at this guy that's just doing this <laughs> to a fountain pen, but it worked because physics and engineering and he knows his stuff so it was just it was pretty cool to watch somebody who is really good at what he does just do his thing at the pen show so i was impressed next up i'll go ahead and do the um the nib grinds because these were were the planned things that i wanted to take care of so that's one two three was it three pins Oh, I'm so sorry. My microphone is picking up all of this stuff. I'm so sorry. But this is my Pelican M400. It has an extra fine nib and I just wanted this to be tuned and smoothed. Now, I was way too late to sign up for any sort of nib grind from any nib meisters at the San Francisco Pen Show. So I knew that because of my experiences last year, that I would be able to sign my name on a wait list, on someone's wait list and be seen during the pen show. <sighs> I got distracted as soon as I walked through that front door. By the time I found Mr. Mike Masayama of MikeAtWork.com, I think that's what his website is. By the time I found him, his wait list was already full. So 
I kept walking past and checking out some of the other nib grinding stations. And I found Mr. Kirk Spear of the Pen Realm. And he had lots of space available on his wait list. I went ahead and put my name on his list so that I could um, try out some of his nib grinds. I've heard that he's got some really, that he's done some really good work on people's fountain pens and, and nibs and things like that. I know that he does uh, great work on Twispies. <laughs> When they come out and I, I want I want that twist be that's coming out soon. So I put my name on Mr. Kirk Spears waiting list and I was seen, yay, about 30 minutes later. So the first thing that I wanted was a Tonto style nib or a Tonto nib grind. And that is his interpretation of the Naginata Togi grind from Sailor. This fountain pen here is the Stanford Pens studio i still do this why do i still do this this was the commission pen that i purchased from stanford pens and i wanted a special nib grind for this specially commissioned fountain pen because i ordered this fountain pen with a fine nib i was not able to get the tanto which can only be ground on something around a size broad so i purchased one of kirk spears 2023 pen show fountain pen nibs. This is his customized fountain pen nib for the 2023 San Francisco pen show. I got this number six broad nib ground to a tanto grind so that I can put it on whatever fountain pen that I want that will take Yovo nibs. So that's the first thing. Since I was not able to grind this fountain pen nib to tanto, I asked for an architect grind on here because I really like architect grinds and I like cursive italic grinds. So this one has an architect grind by Kirk Spear. This is a Tonto grind from Kirk Spear. This has been tuned and smoothed by Kirk Spear. I'm saying this man's name so many times because I'm just so happy with what I've gotten so far. My Wancher Dream Fountain Pen has a cursive smooth italic grind on the medium nib. And I think that's everything. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, one more thing. Okay, so those are all the grinds and the fixes that I, I requested from Mr. Kirk Spear of the Pen Realm. Now, I purchased a fountain pen also from Pen Realm. And that is, what is this thing called? <laughs> this is an Omas fountain pen. I had been looking at this particular fountain pen in the saft green finish on eBay on other websites, anywhere that I could find it. I have been eyeing this fountain pen. This looks beautiful. This feels beautiful. And I asked Mr. Spear if this had been altered in any way. And according to him, there's been no smoothing, no grinding, no, no altering at all of the nib. I'm excited to have an Omas, an original Omas. <sighs> yes. That's that. So tomorrow, I still want to get one more fountain pen ground. So as early as I possibly can, I'm going to go back into the pen show ballroom and get this Sailor Pro Gear Mini ground into something by Mr. Mike Masuyama. I want him specifically to work on this fountain pen if I can help it. If his wait list fills up again, I'm gonna go back to Mr. Kirk Spear because he did an awesome, awesome job on all four of these nibs. Now, ooh, I got a Franklin Kristoff fountain pen. Number six, broad sig nib. <laughs> it's a broad sig nib. This is my fine sig nib. This is my medium sig nib. And now, this is my broad sig nib. So I have sig nibs, fine, medium, and broad. They are all number six size nibs. And I am so excited to try out this new fountain pen. This is a Model 2. I gotta go back and look, go back and ask. It looks like they did the antique glass finish on the inside of the acrylic. On the outside, it is a matte finish. Now the section and the finial are both Primary Manipulation 1, and I'm so I'm so happy to have this because I have a matte finish Primary Manipulation 1 fountain pen as well. So I think that's so cool to have this pen match <laughs> my Franklin Kristoff. That's pretty cool. So yeah, 
This is my new fountain pen. I really wanted to try out the Model 2. I really love how deeply it posts so that when I have it in my hand, it's really, it's like a full-size fountain pen posted without it being like ridiculously long. So I love how this posts. And I already love how it writes because they had a testing station and I was able to test out all of the SIG grinds, all of the Curse of Italic fountain pen nibs, all of the 14 karat gold nibs. Those gold nibs that are sold by Franklin Kristoff are so bouncy. I'm going to get a 14 karat gold nib from Franklin Kristoff sometime in the future. I don't know when it's going to happen, but now that I know how they feel and I've got like little writing samples somewhere, I'll show you. I'm excited to try them out one day. <laughs> I got another Esther Brooke and I didn't want to purchase this one until I felt it in person. I was hoping that some company would have some Esther Brooks laying around this year because I know that I saw them on display last year and I wanted to see that Esther Brooke Model J. I got an Esther Brooke Model J. This hammered metal band on the barrel of the fountain pen that is what is intriguing me the most about this fountain pen. It just, I love how this fountain pen looks. I love the way it looks. I love the brown. I just love browns. I love browns and I love greens and I love tans. So this was absolutely right up my alley. It posts, it can post. If your grip is a little bit further back on the bit, on the barrel of the pen, then, you know, it writes really nicely. But if you choke up on it, it might feel like a really long pen, but hold it back and it just looks really nice. It feels nice. <laughs> I purchased this fountain pen with a Techo nib. Is it by CY? But they ran out of the gold plated Techo nibs. So I'm gonna go back and get my Techo nib tomorrow morning, day two of the San Francisco pen show. They were actually so nice to say that I could keep the broad nib as well. So I have a broad nib and I have a Techo nib and I've also got a journaler nib ground by Gina Salarino of Custom Nib Studio. I got quite a few Yovo nibs and it came with this pen pouch. And also I got a bookmark, which I have not seen just yet. So, ouch. All right, so, oh, cool. So very cool, look at that. Very nice. You can go that way or you can do that way. It's a nice bookmark, it came with my purchase of the fountain pen with a techo nib and a broad nib. On to the unplanned purchases of day one. I bought so much that I actually had to run out, run away from the pen show because I didn't want to see anymore. I feel like I had no self-control by the end of the day. So let's get started on some of the things that I bought. I knew that I wanted to purchase something at the Yamamoto table. I was thinking about purchasing like one of their, the TN size notebooks or another set of like the little memo pads. Since I still have plenty of memo paper here from the Yamamoto paper company, I was not going to buy another stack of these papers this year. Instead of that, I purchased A5 size Yamamoto bank paper, A5 Tomoe Gawa Tomoe River paper, and Cosmo Airlight. These are all A5 size writing pads. So I've got plenty of beautiful paper to use whenever I need. I don't think I've ever used Cosmo Air Light paper. So I figured that I'd go ahead and get a memo pad of this paper since I hear that it's being discontinued. So I wanted to go ahead and get a stack of this paper. I wanted to experience it at least once before it was gone for good. Next is Andorillium ink. I stopped by the Andorillium table. I, I did some writing samples on Tamoy River paper of the colors that, I, that really intrigued me. And the ones that I really enjoyed using were Tollip, is it Tollip? Tollip Moth Warm and Purple Gallinule Purple. Mm, I'm so excited about these two fountain, fountain pen inks. My Peak Shown Design fountain pen is going to be inked up with this taupe warm gray color. What company is this? This reminds me of old maps. This is so beautiful. Oh my gosh, it's just so pretty. This is a maple wood fountain pen, specifically spalted maple wood. Spalting or the spalted wood becomes this way because of there's some sort of fungus that makes its way into the wood. But look at how beautiful it is. This is the only wood pen 
I believe, in my collection. And I am just so happy with this one. <laughs> Posting is a bit ridiculous. It's not meant to be posted. But it just feels so nice. I think I got a fine nib on this one. And I can't stop looking at it. I got a free, just simple black rickshaw pen sleeve. I got these two fountain pen inks. Pelican 4001, Brilliant Brown, and Dark Green. No special reason. During the nib tuning and smoothing workshop that I attended, I was able to purchase these at a deep discount. So I want to at least try them out. And I bought another pen. Kristen Brooks, daughter of Mr. Jonathan Brooks, poured this acrylic. And this is three olives something. Three olive martini or something like that. I don't know. But um, look at the greens and the browns. You know I love my greens and browns. Look at this. So I, I just, oh, I was so drawn to this fountain pen. And her name is Kristen. So I also had to just support Kristen. This is a beautiful fountain pen. And I am just so happy that I have it. These colors are just, they make me happy. All right, so that's this one. And I got a new, a free rickshaw pen sleeve for this one as well. <laughs> and the last purchase that I made today as I was running away from the ballroom is a platinum fountain pen. It is a platinum 3776. This one has a medium nib. It's got like this matte finish. If I show you a comparison between <laughs> these two pens, one is high gloss and the other is a matte finish. Oh my gosh. I love the colors on this fountain pen. Nagasawa Silhouette, the 14 karat gold medium nib. I love how this cream or off-white color and the gold trim kind of warm up the gray of the cap and the gray of the section. The section is actually a high gloss and it looks like the threads are high gloss as well. But the rest of the pen, well, the inside of the cap is high gloss. The external parts of the pen, these materials are a matte finish and it just looks and it feels so good. And I wrote a sample, like I wrote just a little bit with it and it feels good. It looks good. I just love how this fountain pen feels. And after I bought this one, I had to run away because this is a whole lot of stuff. What I'm expecting to do tomorrow, day two, and then on Sunday, day three, after I get one last fountain pen ground to my liking, I'm just going to be smooth sailing, taking a workshop, meeting up with people, and having fun. So all my purchases, hopefully, were made on day one, and um, there will be nothing else. We'll see if I can stick with that. But um, I'm so very happy with all of the purchases that I made today. And um, yeah. Uh, I know this was a little bit different. You see my face now and how excited I am about all of these things that I did. Yeah, so the, these are all of the purchases that I made on day one of the San Francisco Pin Show. If you have any questions, um, if you have any comments about the things that I purchased and um, yeah, I don't know, talk to me. <laughs> Let me know what you think about the purchases that I made and uh, I will see you all in the next video. Have a good day. Bye-bye.